Does that so quite look like the gathering, uh -huh. huh? I don't think we ever got it working, okay. the screen. So, um, you're welcome to come up and do this. Elaine does an awesome job of video on it. You can check it out yes. on YouTube. Thank Elaine you. Elaine always puts yes. on YouTube for us. It'll always be up there. I'll let it yeah, run out of summer studio. Pull down the screen. Let it wait. All right. Once you get your, um, it's adjustable. It has to be used in center needle position. So once you get that set, you should have it set for your machine. If you take it to another machine, you might have to make a few more adjustments to that. So keep that in mind if you're using it on two, two different machines. And another thing is it will go up and down and kind of beat your needle bar to death. And every now and then I've had the needle fall out. So make sure you tighten your needle screw and kind of keep an eye on that too. There's an adjustment right here on the very top. I know it's hard for you guys to see but it's the number 1, 6, and 12. So what that means is it takes one stitch before it pleats the next part, so that would be your gathering stitch. The 6 means it takes 6 stitches and then gathers, so that's where the pleat comes in. The 12, 12 stitches and a gather. It also has this little uh, needle screw, or little screw here that will adjust how far it tucks that in. Okay, turn it um, clockwise, I think makes it deeper, counterclockwise brings it out so it's not quite as deep of a tuck. Okay, and you want to push, there's a little bar here that has teeth on it. You have to be careful never to pull your fabric backwards because it will break those teeth off. It's designed to feed through this way. If you pull it backwards, it grabs those teeth. <coughs> So I take that little bar and just kind of push my fabric right up to the needle. And is this a attachment for a regular machine? It will go on. Um, I, these are any low shank machines. The the um, cheaper one is thirty nine ninety nine, and it's it has to be screwed on. The more deluxe ones, which to me are much better than the uh, cheaper ones, are sixty nine ninety five, and they snap on. And they are designed by Baby Lock for your Baby Lock. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like on one. Uh, it's not feeding. There we go. Still not feeding, which is another reason why I like the better one. I just have the Baby Lock BL9. That's what it's supposed to look like. And that's with it set on one. So that's your gathering. Oh, that's tight. It is real tight. So I'm going to move it to six. And I'm going to back the little needle bar out, the little screw out a little bit. That's on six. That'd be a good ruffle for the bottom of your pants or something. Yep. And it and I backed out my screw a little bit so that it doesn't put that tuck in there quite as much as I was trying to do on the one. Probably on the one you'll need to back it out a little bit. <coughs> and I'll do another one. Then we're gonna go to twelve. And then here was the six. the 12. It takes 12 stitches before it makes the next pleat. Thank you. Okay. Denise, are you using a regular six-man? Mm-hmm. 
and you go back to the back to the south. Stitch off. There's a really good um, tutorial on youcanmakethis.com, unruffling the ruffler or something like that. And they talk about it a little bit, but I always just make extra. And then cut off what you don't need. You at least double. Yeah. But do you see how I adjusted that where it didn't tuck under quite as much? So you have a lot of play that you can play with it. Let me go back to one. Twelve with less of a pleat. Yeah. I made a little template thing, but I don't remember what it is. So I would know when I go to work. Oh, that's way better. Yeah. When you do your on number one, you don't want it to pleat in as much. Because that's way better than my first one. That's the one? Alright, now I'm going to put this on 12 and I'm going to let it tuck it pretty good. And that screw is for tucking how much how is tucked much in. How much is tucked under, how much is pleated. See, my needle came out. I didn't check that and I broke it. But that's um, one of the things you got to make sure every time you do that, make sure you check that that needle pretty good. And I'm not going to change my needle, but I'll show you what I did because I pleated the full length of a doubled over piece. I just folded it in half, have my raw edges here and pleated the top. And then I used my stabilizer and on a piece of, well I did it on a t-shirt, but we'll do it on this um, scrap. I just drew me a circle. I can't find ours. Another item that walked away. But I just put a little circle and then I took that ruffled piece and went around that to make a little flower. Oh, cool. So that I did this. Oh. oh that's adorable. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, that's and at the very end, you just take, you leave this tail about four inches and then you twist that and twist it into the middle and you hand I have mine still pinned but you just tuck it into the center and then stitch that down <laughs> and that's my demo for today and now our lady has the shirt so how long was the, the it was um two width of fabric that's what I started with but then I cut off quite a bit so did you bring the quilt yeah, I just, oh yeah. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> That's so cute. Now she has some clothes. That's cute.